So I'm excited to share with you here today a message. We thought the best gift for Pastor Bob would be two things. Number one, the Bills making the playoff. And number two, uh, he doesn't have to even preach today. So uh, that's, that's, a, that's our gift to you today. I want to start by telling you this, this last summer, my family and I, we went on a trip to the Adirondacks, our first time going there. And we went to uh, visit Old Forge. It was our first time there. And uh, we had a great, great vacation together with our, uh, some of our best friends. And so my son was three at the time. My daughter is one and a half. And uh, we had a, another two-year-old toddler is their kid. And so <coughs> we, uh, we decided that we would like to go on a trail walk together. But we know we've got the kids with us. So we, you know, we think, all right, we got to make this pretty easy, pretty doable for us. So we look up in a little guide and it says, this is like a four out of ten. So we say, okay, we got that. We're good. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm mountain tough. <laughs> That's not a joke. Why, why are you laughing? Um, so um, so we, uh, we decide to go. And at first, it's a nice little trail. We're feeling good. And then all of a sudden, we get to these rocks. It's Bald Mountain, if you've ever been out there. It, we're, we're rocking. And I mean, these, these things are steep. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm good. But we've got a three-year-old with us. And I've got my daughter on my back. And she starts whining and crying because she's, as we're going up these hills, she's banging her head on my neck, and she can't even see anything, so she's, she's yelling at us. I mean, we got a cute picture, but it was not all like Instagram shows you. So, um, so we're going up, and at first it seems easy, and then it gets really, really challenging. And so this trip goes from super, super fun to super, super anxiety-provoking. And, and now our mission is, got to hang on to my son's hand real, real tight, and we just got to keep him safe. Because you start going up, and you get these beautiful views up there, but there's, there's no guardrails. I mean, I'm, I'm a suburban boy. Like, I, I walk on my sidewalks, and somebody's paved them for me. I mean, that's, that's where I'm at. And, and so if, if my son decides to take off, we're in some real trouble. But um, thankfully, he didn't. And for us, you know, it was, it was still a great, great experience. My, my son ate it up. He, he loved every moment of it. But we really were really, really focused on, we got to keep him safe. And, and for us, you know, we, looking back, at least for my son and I, I don't know if this would be true for my wife, we, we wouldn't take that trip back. We, we loved it. It was a great, great adventure for us. My question for us today is, what about for us on our faith journey? Is, our, is it just about being safe? Is it just about staying within the guardrails? Is it just about making sure that, that we don't sin, that we don't go over there with those people who do those things? Is that what the Christian life is? Is, it, is? is saying yes to God really just saying yes to a life of boredom and monotony? And, you know, do you, do you just have to follow some outdated rule book that was written 2,000 years ago and that doesn't really apply to my life? It's, it's, it's irrelevant at this point. My question for us today is, what if following God was not what you expected? So we're going to open up our Bibles today, or we're going to have it on the screen today, uh, at Joshua chapter 1. And this is a fantastic passage of Scripture that uh, I hope you guys will, will really enjoy. But the, the, thing of, the thing of it is, is what's happening here, I want to give you a little background before we jump in to Joshua chapter 1, is that Moses uh, has been the leader of the Israelite people for this whole time. He has uh, just... He, he's been a great leader for them. He's been faithful. They've loved him. But the passage is going to start where Moses has just passed away. So these people are grieving. They're looking for what's next. They're looking for a leader. And so this passage opens up with Joshua chapter 1. And uh, let's read this together. This is God speaking to Joshua. It says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your food, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong 
and courageous. If you have your note sheet, why don't you underline that right there? Strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous because you, Joshua, will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give to them. Be strong and very courageous. I want you to underline that as well. Be careful to obey all the law my my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Underline that as well. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. See, Joshua is given this command three times in in nine verses, whatever it is. Be strong. Be courageous. Because he is asking Joshua to step up and to say yes to God's call on his life. And Joshua responds with that. He says yes to the unknown adventure that is ahead of him. And what happens for Joshua, for him saying yes, is anything but a boring life. In fact, for Joshua, he gets to live an incredible adventure. For him, he, he works, if you read on in the book of Joshua, he works with a bunch of spies and a prostitute to accomplish God's plans. I mean, that's an average work week for me. I don't know about you guys. Um, <laughs> Just kidding, Pastor. Um, <laughs> um, but it's not every day you hear a story like that. Or, or for, for him, they go to take over Jericho, and they have this miraculous experience of marching around the walls, blowing the trumpets, and the walls fall down. And so Joshua gets this incredibly awesome experience of being this leader. And, you know, it, it's this, this really, really exciting life. It's, you know, I haven't, I haven't led a life where I got to work with spies or work with a prostitute or, or work with leading a nation into battle. That hasn't been my story. But here's the thing is, Joshua did, and he said yes. And here's what I want to talk to you about today is four points to consider when we say yes to God. I want you to consider where, where you're at in your current faith journey and what the next step might be for you. So here's the first thing, is that every faith story starts with acceptance. So Joshua, as we talked about, he said, yes, I will be the leader of these Israelite people who are looking. But here's the thing about a life of faith, is that a life of faith is never ever forced on you. God doesn't force you to believe. He extends love to you. He loves you just as you are. But you get to choose whether to receive that love. All of us have that choice. See, Jesus came on a rescue mission to earth for you, for your soul, to offer you sin. To, to, nope, not to offer you sin, to offer you forgiveness from sin. Big difference. That was the mission of Jesus, okay? Uh, Pastor, you want to just take this back. Um, <laughs> but here's the thing. You get to respond. You get to choose that gift of forgiveness. You get to choose whether you're going to receive it. Joshua said yes, and and it starts his remarkable journey with God. And I'd invite you to say yes as well this morning. I hope that that this morning wouldn't go by without you taking advantage of saying, yes, Jesus, I want to follow you. I want to to make you Lord of my life. But the second thing to to, uh, think about, to consider in saying yes to the adventure of God is that your faith story is going to include adversity. It just is. Now, now we're not going to read the whole book of Joshua today because we got that Bills game at one. I know you guys are all looking at the clock there. But the, the thing of Joshua is he had these great victories, but he also had some real, real struggles. If you keep reading after Jericho and after they take over that land together, he goes to take over the city Ai. And God has called them to go do that. So they go, and they're all excited. Everybody's all hyped on Joshua and his leaders, leadership. He's, he's becoming popular and famous. Everybody's, yeah, Joshua, th- you know, thank you, God, for our new leader. And God specifically tells them, do not steal these things from, from the land in Jericho. And one of the guys in Joshua's crew, in, in his army, Achan, goes and steals things. He goes exactly against what God told them not to do. And so when they go to AI, their mission completely fails. It doesn't work. And and they now experience this intense failure 
all together. So Joshua gets to see that amongst great victories, there also was this time for him where, where the adversity came. And he had to trust in God and lean into God, even though he, he got to see what happens when they, as a community, took their eyes off of God. They failed. And, and here's the thing for you to know, and maybe you already know this, but following Jesus doesn't mean that everything is going to go well all the time. It's not the way it works. I wish that saying, Lord, I give you my life, offered you salvation for, for now and forever, and that it would also just like make money rain down on you. But uh, it, it doesn't work that way, unfortunately. Saying yes to Jesus doesn't mean that adversity is going to go away. Jesus is not a, a lottery system. It, it, it doesn't work like that. There is going to be things that happen for the believer or the non-believer that, that causes real pain and real struggle and real turmoil in our lives. We as Christians, we still face devastating diagnoses. We still face tragic losses. We still, we still face deep hurts, breaks in our relationships with others that, that keep us up at night, that keep us praying to God for restoration. So following Jesus is not going to get you away from adversity, but it does give you purpose to that adversity. That's what following Jesus will do. He promises that, that all that pain, when it's filtered through, through his love and through his grace, will actually bring purpose to the pain. What God does is he redeems the hurt. Can you say redeem the hurt? Redeem the hurt. This is what God does. He's like, he's like the ultimate recycler. See, see, we live in this fallen world where sin has invaded. And so darkness and, and bad stuff happens around us or to us or even through us. And, and we feel guilty and we feel terrible. But here's what God does is he redeems the hurt. What, what scripture says is that all things work together for the good of those who love him. And, and so, you know, I don't know about you, but, but for me, when, whenever I'm going through some like real deep hurt in my life, I often like to, to lean into those people who have, who have gone through something similar in their lives. I'm not talking about the obnoxious people who like try to one-up you with your pain or something like that. That's not what I mean. But somebody who has sincerely gone through that same pain, those are the same people I want to lean into. You know what's happening there? God's redeeming the hurt. It's not that God caused that hurt and pain in that other person just for me. It's that he's redeeming that pain so that I might find solace, that I might find um, somebody to go through this with. God gives us each other to be able to navigate this through. God's the ultimate recycler. What the enemy intended for bad, the Lord can use for good. Amen? Amen. And so, so maybe your step today is realizing that, that your adversity, you're not alone in it. That God is with you. And that God can actually redeem your pain for good. The third thing I want you to consider in, in stepping forward in your adventure with God is that your faith story will develop through your anchor. What I mean by the anchor is the study of God's word and who God is. You'll see right away in, in this passage that we read together that in the commissioning of Joshua into this leadership position, he says specifically, I need you to lean into scripture, to know the scripture and make it a part of your daily lives. Look at verse 7. I'll read it again for you. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate it on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. This is so, so important for each and every one of us, because knowing who God is, is the basis of knowing who he made you to be. Knowing who God is is the basis of knowing who he made you to be. You see, your, your personal Bible study, your time spent with him in, in group settings like this, when we all gather together or in our life groups or in the women's Bible study, whatever it is where, where you gather with other people is a way for you to lean in and learn more about the truth of who God is and who he has made you to be. His plans and his purposes are revealed through scripture in your life. 
His word is alive and active and well. And, you know, I, what I want you to know is this, skip, this, this step can't be skipped. You, you can't skip over this. There's no shortcut to a relationship with God. Just like with, with a spouse, there's no shortcut to, to time spent in getting to know your spouse. The same is true of God. You know, there, <clears throat> you, you've got to figure out a way to come up with a rhythm in your life to be able to do this. And, and maybe this is the, the challenge for you today. I know that even for myself, as I was preparing and thinking about this, I thought, man, this, this is what I feel like God is, is stepping me, calling me to in 2018. I need to anchor myself even more to God's word, spend more time with him to know who he is so I can better know who I am and who I'm made to be. The final opportunity to grow in your faith journey is to understand that your faith story will be your great adventure. Joshua's life, as we talked about, it was filled with all sorts of miracles. It was fulfilled promises he got to see. He got to see God moving forward and working in people's lives. And your faith story starts with the acceptance of Christ and his forgiveness and the new life that he gives. But then it keeps developing through you accepting him and allowing him to lead you each day into the great unknown. It's like every day we take a step and we trust in God a little bit more. That's an adventure. If you're just trying to navigate this all on your own, you don't have to do that. You could step into this great adventure with Jesus. He will guide you, just like the promise to Joshua. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. You know, Joshua was this man of great faith. He made, he made incredible things happen in his life. God worked through him. And that same story can be true for you. And today, today we celebrate Pastor Bob. And uh, what, what a great day to be able to celebrate him. But PB followed the, PB, I call him PB sometimes, so just stick with me on that. PB had this, this same progression in his life. He initially, as a young man, said yes to Jesus. He said, yes, I believe in Jesus and who he was and what he has done for me. He accepted that. But then he also, uh, he, he went to college at the University of Buffalo, studied political science, and coming out of there, instead of pursuing his original plan to become a lawyer, which I think he would have been pretty successful. Uh, I, if you ever debated that man, <laughs> hasn't worked out well for me, I can just tell you that. Um, he, he decided that, hey, instead of just pursuing what I want when I want it, he decided to say yes to God's call on his life. And he went to Jamestown, New York, to help pastor with his church, for se to pastor his dad's church for, for several years. They did that together. And then God gave him a call 20 years ago today to come and say yes to Calvary Assembly. And, and now we celebrate 20 years, 20 years of faithful ministry, of pouring into us, investing in us. And here's the truth about Pastor Bob is the same as number three. He stayed true and rooted to the anchor, to who God is. It's that he has been faithful to God, and God has been faithful back to Pastor Bob and to all of us. You know, Pastor has helped us week after week, help us to grow in the knowledge of the goodness of who God is because he has studied God's word. He, he knows who he is and he, he knows that he is God's. And PB would be the first to tell you that this has been a marvelous adventure and that it has all been worth it. And what an adventure it's been so far and the best is definitely yet to come. And ultimately, for all of us, we can look to Jesus who went through this as well. He went through the same progression. You realize that Jesus still had to say yes to this mission. You know, he, he didn't have to say yes. In fact, in, in Luke twenty two forty two, 42, he says, Father, if you, if you can, if you're willing, take this cup from me. But then he says, not my will, but yours be done. See, Jesus, Jesus is saying like, hey, is there any other way we can accomplish this rescue mission? And there wasn't. There had to be a sacrifice. And Jesus said yes to that because he says yes to you. And he says you are worth it. But he had to say yes first. And he did. He said yes to the call. And we all know about the adversity that Jesus faced, that, that he faced on the cross. And, but you know what? He had adversity all throughout his ministry. The whole way through, he, he, got, uh, all, all, he went through all sorts of stuff, including to, to the very end, his own crew, his own boys in his top 12, they say, uh, I'm going to hand in some money 
to turn you over. Judas, right? And it's not even Judas who just did that. Peter, in his inner three, part of his three best friends, can you imagine this? His three best friends, he denies him three times right before Jesus is about to go to the cross. His own crew turns his back on him. Jesus went through all kinds of adversity. And, but here's the, the truth about Jesus. He was rooted to the true anchor. Jesus knew the scriptures. He knew who God was. He had incredible knowledge of his father. He was even tempted in the desert to abandon the plan, but he did not. He said, you are worth it because he knew who God was. He stayed connected to the truth and what a remarkable adventure it was for Jesus. Not an easy one, but Jesus got to lead. He, the, the, the adventure Jesus lived, it was, it's what makes it possible, the opportunity for us to say yes here today and begin to grow in our adventure. And just like Joshua, Pastor Bob, and Jesus, you are invited to that same adventure today. Did I just misspoke? Okay. I mean, I'm making sure I didn't call him like Pastor Jesus or something. <laughs> so here's what I want us to do this, do, this, do this morning. He is our pastor, ultimately. But anyway, we're not going to digress. I want actually everybody to bow your heads and close your eyes. We're going we're gonna to take time this morning. We're going to do some extended time of reflection today. Because I want us all to, to begin to think about and pray about and just be, begin to get our souls quiet before the Lord and think, what is my next step? Because I don't know about you. I don't know your faith story. I don't know where you're at. And I don't, you know, I don't know the things that you've gone through. But I want to give you the opportunity to accept the gift of forgiveness and new life that Jesus offers. That's always our first step in beginning a life of meaning and purpose and adventure. So if that's you here today, I actually want to lead you in a prayer. There's nothing magical about this prayer. It's simply a way for you to respond and say, yes, Jesus, I want to make you Lord of my life. I don't want to do this on my own. So would you just pray this prayer with me if you never have before? Just say, God, I believe in you. I thank you for dying in my place. I admit my own sin and my own failures. And I ask for your forgiveness. Will you become the Lord of my life? Now, I'd invite everybody to continue to keep your eyes closed and your, your heads bowed as, as we continue to reflect. But if that was you here this morning, today is a significant day. Today is a significant day in the life of your journey, of your faith story. And I wouldn't want today to go by without you having a conversation with somebody. So at the end of service, we're going to have time for you to, to pray with people up front, or you could talk to somebody, or you could even go to the Welcome Center. We've got free resources for you to, to start this journey with Jesus that we'd love to be able to give to you for free. So maybe that was you. You're in, you're in the first category. That's, that's your step today. But maybe for you, it's about adversity. Maybe for you, you're just hurting. You're not sure what to do tomorrow. I want to encourage you, stay the course. I know your pain is real, and I don't, I don't want to minimize it in, in any way. But the way you will heal and your pain will produce growth is for you to stay close to Jesus. Maybe this is your step today, is, is to lean in to Jesus because you can't do this on your own. And no matter who you are or where you are in your faith story, I can promise you that as we, as we look at number three, if, if you tie yourself to the anchor, you will be stronger. You will be more wise. You will have more grace in your life. You will navigate 